Hello my friends, Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, and you've heard the word, or the term, hot topic before, I'm sure. Well, what is a hot topic? It means something that everybody's talking about. And now these mud fossils and these ancient creatures are now quite hot topics. And, and, and I am also a hot topic, meaning don't get around me. <laughs> I'm too hot to handle because I have evidence that supports everything that people are saying now. And this really goes against academia. They hate this. Now, I'm going to show you my evidence to show things like this are not just nonsense. All right, this is a UFO mania truth is out there and it is out there and, but this all of a sudden somehow disappeared um, the skull disappeared before scientists had a chance to perform DNA analysis and carbon dating well my stuff hasn't disappeared I have all the evidence that you're ever going to want to hear and um, this I, I don't know about this I can't make any comments I don't have it in my hand I haven't tested it but a lot of things are not what they think they are but a lot of things are what they are purported to be. And I will show you a few of them. They're going to knock your socks off right now. I'll start with, with an alien. Okay, my wonderful, wonderful friends. You are in for a thrill. And I'm serious. You see that? That looks to me like teeth. And, of course, the rest looks like the face of some kind of who knows what. Now, this particular skull disappeared before it could be looked into. However, I have ones that have not disappeared and they deserve looking into. And now I'm going to show you one that did did disappear or it could be tracked down possibly, but it was sold from the original owner. All right, that is the head. These this is pretty obvious that this thing is not fake. And I understand the layers of skin and areolar tissue, and this it fits exactly the profile, no question. And I will show you in a different shot. Now, there's a different angle, and obviously it was embedded in some kind of a stone formation. And, you know, they, they do get embedded, entombed, and, but, but it will come off at the fascia, which is skin, organs, like, um, like this. This is a lung, and wh wherever you have fascia or membranes, that's where you have separation layers. This is all. This is DNA certified human lung, so that is no question about it. Anyway, um, these look like ears. <laughs> okay, let's look at some heads. This is the first one. This is a preserved mud fossilized head found in Kentucky by. Arlie Caudill and Jim Burt, so they did all the research on it. Unfortunately, Scott Walter got on TV, and in 20 seconds, and literally 20 seconds, by the time he saw it, the first time he ever saw it, and in 20 seconds, it was dismissed as, he said, absolutely no question whatsoever, it's carved sandstone head. He never looked at any of the details whatsoever. 20 seconds made the, he says, oh, that's just iron oxide. Well, iron comes out of blood. So, the, all the experts, and, and, and Scott I, I confronted him and Scott you, you should have stood up my friend we went back and forth and he said, finally said I'm the expert and you're nothing get lost basically that was the end of it and he's never stood up kind of not a good look my friend okay I spoke about Jim Birchall and Arlie Caudill from now on I'm just going to use first names these are people that didn't bring these things forward they, they've shown them to me I don't know whether they want to be known or not but I did have somebody that came back I mean said don't ever use my name again like that so I, I don't want to get in trouble but I, this was from a, a guy named Heath and he sent me this picture of the skull. I mean, the eyes, it's just unbelievable. And I understand these pock marks, and I will show you them in other areas. This is, this is areolar type, soft, fleshy tissue, and it has pockets of, of um, bags of really like water inside in a matrix of, of collagen. And the, that has leaked out, and that's why there's all these little pock marks. And I understand this very well. Now, that was picture one here. Now this is the other shot. Now these look like ears to me. I don't know. It's certainly 
I can't see anybody saying that's not a head. Now, what it's embedded in here is this like some form of a space suit or whatnot? I don't know. And and again, Heath does not have this now either. This is gone. So all of these things are have become either sold or lost or disappeared for some reason or not. As you know, I have giants, and my giant, the, my biggest giant, would not be much smaller than this one. And um, this is quite an old picture. I don't know where it came from. People send me these things all the time. Now, this is on Easter Island, and uh, I believe it's on Easter Island. Again, these people send me these things. I can't verify all of these things exactly, but I can tell you what. I understand petrification of mud fossils and they have all of these little stripes in them that's just what happens to the flesh it, it it sounds crazy and it looks crazy but it's not it's exactly what does happen in the certain conditions and i have all kinds of different specimens that display this exact same condition and there can be blood now they can do they can DNA test all kinds of things and all you have to do is drill deep enough into an arterial blood supply where you've removed everything off the surface and gone in deep enough and you'll actually find sometimes even raw blood absolutely blood I'm not kidding you see that that's a bone these are bone foramens in, in here these little cavities they send blood through your body that's that's a rock so don't tell me you can't get blood out of a rock because that blood just came out of that rock and that is blood no question whatsoever because this is the clotting fiber that is produced by the body to make scabs and these are the blood veins the artery and the vein there's the vein which comes out with the black in our body it's blue but when it turns into mud fossils it's black the red is, stays more or less reddish brownish and in um, in mud fossils so <laughs> blood is no issue whatsoever and I understand the blood I understand the chemistry I understand the fabric the, I have microscopes and I know exactly what's going on with all of this they call it feldspar which covers the coating of all kinds of rocks and then inside the feldspar is basalt and all these different other like this here this is a goose right you see that feather pattern there you see that that's a, the head of a goose. Anything will petrify in the mud fossil conditions, which is a wet, salty waters. And this side of the goose was laying flat, like that. And the neck came over like this, and ran out this way, and then it snapped off. And here is the neck is in there. You have to really look here. You can see if you twist it just the right way, you can see the light show up where the neck is. But it's now become what they would call basalt. It's stone, but it's not. And if you see this covering, that's this, these outside fabric, and that's the fabric of life, and it's collagens, keratins, and keratins, and they are rubbery membrane coatings that coat everything. The out, your skin is nothing more than a barrier between you and the rest of the world. And the, your lungs, your organs, your kidneys, your heart, your bones, they all have to be separated and they're separated by that same stuff that's called fascia. And when it petrifies in the mud fossil conditions, it's called feldspar. And then feldspar can bleed as we just saw. All right, this is an Egyptian head was found in New Jersey, and, and I can verify all of these little pock marks and so forth. That's blood foramen, and they, those are cavities that are body cavities. And um, let's see what I got here. That's what it looks like. And all you see, all of those little pock marks and so forth, that is the areolar tissue, and that's what this thing looked like. This was found in New Jersey in a garage in a half buried. And I have a lot of information on this, but the, again, I can't really disclose who these things, who's, people don't like it when they I use their name, so I'm not going to do it. All right, this is another friend of mine, Kim. She found this head. I don't know whether she found it or she bartered it from somebody. I don't know what happened here, but this came from up on the Mount Shasta area, up in, I believe, Washington State. Now... I did a virtual autopsy on this online, and there's no question this was alive. 
All right. Once again, this is the fabric of life. This is a literal broken, cracked skull and blood coming out of there. That is red blood. And I saw I could found all the veins and arteries and the throat architecture and all that stuff. No question it was alive. Okay, I, I fully understand the colors, the red and the black, is vein blood and artery blood. This is the crest that is literally part of the head because the skull cracked in the back and blood came out of it, so it is obviously is part of the structure of the head. Now, this, I believe, had hair coming out, and I'll show you why. Now, that, I think, must have been an ear or something like that. Because the other alien head I showed you had two looking ear looking things up here. And it might have had some relationships. I have no clue about that. I, I'm not making any claims about that whatsoever. But I'm trying to find the ear because I will show you glycon, which is the only closest I can get to this. But it has hair coming out of it. Let me show you. Okay, now, of course, this is just a sculpture, too. Who, who knows if anybody knew about this stuff, but it appears somebody knew about something. Now, you see the crest? It, it's as close as I can get. And there's hair coming out of it, like, and the ear is up, up here, I, I think. You know, it's as, it's as close as I can get. But there was all kinds of creatures on this earth that nobody's ever ever even considered to possibly be real and now there are quite likely a lot of them were real now this is called glycon a white naga worship at thomas now in romania on the black sea it was a bestower of fortune and the now we're going to get into the dragons of china and japan and the united states and you know south america they, everybody had a dragon and it appears that they ruled the earth and they were just, I cannot explain the sizes of the things that I'm about to show you, but I can show you the anatomy and some of the chemistry, because we're going to see this red and the black over and over and over, that's the blood. And I will show you the anatomical features that I say support the things I, so far have I shown you. And Kim's head was cut right off here, and up inside was the arteries and the veins that would supply the head and down to the body with blood, and also the you could see an actual forked tongue. I believe it's forked. It was. It looked like two pieces coming out, at, and I'll show you that. You see, it looks like to me there was hair growing out of that crest at the top, and of course that's the you know, the backing of the head, and there was a crack down on it in the back. And all of these little, these are all like skin dimples on the skin. I mean, they are. And that's what happens when things are long duration flood conditions. It's called nucleophilic substitution, and it depends on what was in the waters where it was invaded by because that's what happens is the molecules get in there and they carry with them little other other elements other molecules and if one of these can get onto one of these they become stable using the ones in the middle of transition metals it's a, i understand the process now and i've documented it quite well and shown it a million times but i believe this looks to me like it could have been the hair as far as i'm concerned this could very well have been the naga all right, that's the eye. It's it's uh, this thing's heavily invaded. It's completely substituted by. It looks primarily like silicates. All right, this is the bottom of Kim's naga head. Now the chin is right down there, so the head is coming up sort of a little on a sideish. This is the throat. All right. Now, the mouth is out that way. So it would be eating from here and coming down. This, I believe, is the forked tongue. All right? Because this is the opening of the mouth. Every Again, nucleophilic substitution just fills everything in with crystallized minerals that create stability. Because primarily, most of the cavities will be filled by something. And a lot of times, it's just crystals. It's just crystal. All right, now, that's the throat. 
you see these two things here? That's got something to do with the the neck and bones that go up the back, you know, uh, the vertebra and so forth. Well, how, however, that's arranged. I don't know what thing. That's not what you call your average human being. So, now, again, we're seeing the black and the red, but you can see you have to take your time. And then we're going to look at the veins and the arteries in a second because everything has to be serviced with blood. If you can't find the veins, the arteries, the anatomical features, the throat, the, the tongue, the neck, everything, you have to be able to find everything. Now, it's going to be subtle. If this was wet, you would see a whole different picture here. You would see it in a much better condition. Now, I had to do everything over the internet with Kim and for, you know, and she was very, very gracious and you know, did everything I asked her to do. Will you do this? Will you do that? And I'm, by the time, you know, but sooner or later, you got you wear out. You're welcome. <laughs> but um, I, I found everything I needed to find to prove this is it's no question it was alive. Nobody went up and carved this and put those cracks in the head and put the blood in there. And, and, and again, now we're in, a, in an era where things can really be examined in a whole new light. And I am leading expert in this field. I don't care what you say. It's just a fact. And it ain't bragging if it's true, and it's true. I developed all of the techniques to understand what we see. And I understand the chemistry. I understand the anatomy. I understand the biology. And I'm starting to understand quite well the history that supports all of these things that I'm finding. 